Hi, I'm Dr. Yosef with During, and uh, the purpose of this video is kind of general information. It's kind of a fun video. It's how to avoid getting sent to a psychiatric hospital. I say this kind of tongue in cheek, um, but um, really what I'm talking about is those um, situations or those borderline cases where there's some wiggle room. You could go in on an involuntary commitment or you could go home. So what is an involuntary commitment? It's what uh, mental health professionals and sometimes emergency room physicians uh, place on you to, to have you admitted against your will to a psychiatric hospital. Typically, this is because of one of three reasons. Um, you can have any of the reasons. It could be you're at imminent risk of suicidal behavior, imminent risk of homicidal behavior, or you're gravely disabled. And typically, we interpret gravely disabled to be acutely psychotic or manic you know, and um, clearly looking like you're going to have a further psychotic decompensation and want to bring you in to make sure that you're safe. First things first, if you come in and you've just had a suicide attempt, you know, you've got like the ligature around your neck from a hanging or you've slit your wrist or something like that, there's nothing that you can say that's going to get you out of an involuntary detention. People are going to bring you in. If you're acutely psychotic, um, you're coming into the hospital as well or, or acutely manic. So, those cases, they're, they're very kind of cut and dry. It's clear to see the risk there and the need for a period of observation and a really safe discharge plan before someone goes. However, we often actually see borderline cases in the emergency room. And so these can be, uh, say, cases of um, overdose. So let's say someone is arguing with their spouse and they've had like 10 drinks that night. And in the heat of the moment during an argument, the person grabs a bottle of Tylenol and she pops five in her mouth and panics, calls, calls the emergency room or the husband panics and she comes into the hospital. She sits there overnight because obviously nothing happens very quickly in an emergency room. And then in the morning, the psychiatrist comes in. The patient, you know, you, you're now sober. You're looking back, you're reflecting on what's happened. And, um, and you're saying, wow, this happened in the heat of the moment. I've never had a suicide. I've never had a suicide attempt before. And I really regret what I did. You know, looking back on it, I only did it because I was intoxicated. I've been able to talk to my spouse. We've patched things up. Things just got out of hand because of the drinking. And I want to go home. Um, so the most important thing that you can do to, to make sure that um, you don't get sent to the, the psychiatric hospital on involuntary detention is to make sure a family member comes along with you. This is good for all sorts of reasons. So you want to have a parent come by, your spouse, a sibling, all of that's great. Friend is okay as well, but it's less good. And really how that helps kind of bolster your case is there is a person there for the psychiatrist to corroborate your, your account with. They can say, well, you know, friend, family member, let's step outside. I was talking to Susie. Um, you know, she said that in the heat of the moment, she just had this overdose. Do you think that's a, um, you know, and that she hasn't been feeling suicidal lately and she really regrets it? I mean, does that sound credible to you? And they may say, uh, yeah, it does. You know, that, that's kind of exactly what happened. Um, you know, I don't really think she needs to be here. Uh, psychiatrist is probably going to ask some other questions. Has she been appearing really depressed lately? Has she been making a lot of suicidal comments? You know, has she been giving away her belongings or texting goodbye to people? If the answers are no, 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 and no. It's further building this case to support what you said, uh, that this was really something that was acute. It was brought on by intoxication and the risk has really uh, now resolved. The other thing that helps in this situation is um, for a psychiatrist or a mental health prof professional to feel comfortable about you going home after one of these borderline incidents is they need to have a safety plan. We need to talk to someone and say, you know, do you have guns in the house? You know, do you have pills? If there's guns, does the patient have access to them? Can you get rid of them for a period of time? Can you lock away the pills? Can you administer the pills for a period of weeks until their mental health professional says they can take it over on, on themselves? And all of these things, if they agree to it, it kind of builds this case where everyone's actually feeling pretty comfortable. You're feeling comfortable, your loved one's feeling comfortable, the psychiatrist is feeling comfortable. And this is going to tilt them towards the direction of this person actually can go home. There's not enough here for an involuntary psychiatric hold and the care seems reasonable. So I hope this video was helpful. The number one thing that you can do to help your case, um, if you think you're kind of in this borderline situation, is bring a family member along. So 
Thank you for listening to this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.